Hey there, Alistair here, back in the workshop. Well, kind of back in the workshop. I'm still having a little bit of a setback with my uh, surgery that I had in September to, to deal with my diverticulitis flare-ups. That's all gone really well, but one of the wounds didn't heal too good, and then I had a blood clot, and long story. Um, I've had to cut it open again and leave it open. And it's around about that six centimetres long by about five or six centimetres actually deep going in so they can't stitch it back up again because they said it could get infected so what they've done is given me this fancy gadget here so i don't know if i'll tip that down you might actually be able to see what it is it's a vacuum uh, this is a, a vacuum pump you can see it says it's uh see the little thing spinning around there so this draws a vacuum and it goes down the down the pipe which i've got stuffed in my pocket and then it goes into here Sorry about the uh, state of the stomach. Bit of um, Christmas, um, too much Christmas food there. But you can see there, it goes in, and this is sealed here with like a some kind of sticky, plasticky kind of stuff. But the pipe goes in there, and that's that's whoop, that's sucking a vacuum on the wound, and apparently it helps it heal up. So hopefully it does its job, but. I'm pretty lucky to, to have this. I think this is quite an expensive um, gadget. And uh, very grateful to the uh, June Lup Hospital for fixing me up. Um, so what I thought was, while I'm being vacuumed, I thought I would do a quick video on stabilising, which also uses vacuum. So um, just a quick kind of run through. I'm no expert on, vac on, on vacuuming. I'm no expert on um, stabilising, but I've been doing it for a few years now and getting good results. So must be doing something fairly right. But it's probably put someone out there that will give me some tips and say you should be doing this, should be doing that, which I'm always open for new ideas. And, uh, you know, uh, you never uh, you're always learning. That's the way I look at it. So um, I've got um, I've actually got a couple of blocks here that um were stable i've actually got one stabilized to one unstabilized so the same same material but one is stabilized and one isn't so i'll show you the difference in weight so we've got two blocks about the same kind of size that one that one's actually a little bit a little bit bigger but it's only a only a rough uh, rough kind of guide so i'll put the first one this is un, this is um unstabilized this one so oh, we've got a bit would help if i turn the turn the scales on wouldn't it there at zero. So that one is, and you can see that 166 grams. So that's unstabilized. Now this one has been stabilized. So I'll put that on there. And this one is 272 grams. So you're looking at, it has sucked in 100 grams of stabilizing juice. So we've got the two blocks. As I said, one is 166 grams and the other one is 270 grams. So you can see it does pull a lot of, I know uh, this is poplar, so it is a fairly porous wood. So, uh, but you can see, get a rough idea of how much it actually draws into the wood and the difference in weight. So 100 grams is, is, is you know, quite a big increase in weight so i'll give you a quick run through on the machine that i use it's nothing fancy it's just one of the old ebay jobs um i can't remember how much it was in dollars now i think something like 150 dollars for the for the tank and the pump but uh nothing fancy and uh, i shall show you the tank so what we've got is this stainless steel tank here and you, you, you put it, what I normally do is put the wood in first, this has actually got the, 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 the cactus juice in there already, but uh, normally I would have that empty, I would put all the blocks in there, put some, This I've just got this piece of mesh here that I put on top, and I've got this old, it's an old bearing case in which is pretty heavy, and then that goes on top, holds it all down into the, into the cactus juice so it doesn't float up. Um, then we put the lid on, like that and close that valve now you open this valve 
and then turn on the vacuum pump which is here so basically they, you, you switch that on uh, oh no that's the uh, hardness tester hang on oh, I've got to plug it in so you plug that in and let me just turn that around a little bit. So you can switch that on, and then the vacuum starts drawing now. That's the valve is open, this valve is shut, and you'll get a seal on there. It takes a bit of time to, to get it to seal, but you can see the gauge going up. And there you go, it's got seal around the lid and it is going up to I think it goes up to about 30 atmospheres of vacuum which apparently is the most you can get you can't go further than that or 29 I think it is the max but there you go you can see it's gone right the way up it's actually gone past it but I think the gauge is a bit out but so there you got a rough idea the wood's in there now or it would be in there wood would be in there and it is sucking all the air out of the wood yeah so it sucks the air out of the actual wood so you get lots of bubbles all um, coming up to the surface you get quite a lot of foam so you have to you might have to regulate turn the pump on and off or shut the valve a little bit just to regulate how much vacuum goes in um so the the air is being drawn out of the wood and you leave it in there i normally it depends on on what kind of wood it is if i'm doing hardwoods sometimes they're in they're in there under vacuum for like a month six six weeks i've had i've, I've actually left them in there for longer like a couple of months because i forgot they're in the tank but uh i don't leave the pump running constantly because it's a cheapy ebay cheapy ebay pump it gets pretty hot so i normally run it for like 15 minutes every however long however and then you know Every time I come back in the workshop, I just flick it on 15 minutes, give it another suck, and then just check through the, to the, the, the plexiglass there, see if you can see any bubbles. If there's no bubbles coming out, then you're normally pretty good at how much air has come out. So then next process is you release the vacuum. So you can release the vacuum, either open this one, that's like a vent, or you can just take the pipe off, whatever, but I'll just open that one. So you release the vacuum, as you can see the gauge going down. And then um, what that does, once once the vacuum is uh, released and the lid lids off like that, what that does, now I think this is the, the process. Don't you know? Don't uh, I don't take it as uh, the truth, whole truth. But I think what happens is the because the air has been sucked out of the wood, when you release the vacuum, the air tries to get back into the wood. And because it's submerged below the uh, sort of the surface of the, the cactus juice, it can't suck air in, so it sucks the cactus juice in instead. So basically, you're replacing the air with liquid. And uh, Normally, if you've vacuumed for a month, you want to leave it for the same amount of time, really. Leave it in there soaking, longer the better, to be honest. Um, and take the um, take the weight and the piece of gauze off. If it floats to the surface, then I normally put them into another container with some cactus juice, put them into a pressure pot and give them sort of like 50, 60 PSI pressure and leave that for a few days try and just squeeze more of the air out and squeeze more of the liquid into the wood so then back into the vacuum chamber and give them like another week or two weeks so it is a, it is a it's a drawn out process and uh it's one of those things that you're sort of doing in between jobs so you're not just concentrating just on the stabilizing that's just like ticking away in the background while you're doing other things you know and i've actually built up quite a lot of these have actually just come out. Um, I bake these. Well, I'll get onto that in a minute. In, in a minute. But these are just these are finished. But basically, once you've sucked the uh, revacuumed them, or if they didn't need vacuuming again, they're ready to go straight into an oven. So you wrap them up in some in some aluminium foil, and then just put them in the little toasting oven, and ninety odd degrees, I think, in ninety five degrees, something like that, for a couple of hours. I'm already giving them like three hours, really. 
and then take the uh, foil off before they go cold because it comes off easier otherwise it really is quite hard you can see there's a little piece on there still but, um, but you can hear it's it's rock hard now and this is um that's a bit of hu huon pine so pine is not particularly hard wood but once it's been stabilized it's like rock hard and uh should make some good uh it's got quite a nice grain to that should make some uh, quite nice handles and that's that's white white wengi which is quite hard but anyway like i've got some more other stuff here this is like real hard aussie woods uh, whether or not stabilizing works with the real hardwoods i don't know I've, i think there's a guy that does stabilizing which you can probably answer that he does it actually on a professional scale and i think he st literally stabilizes everything but his equipment is obviously low is better than mine and whether that makes a difference who knows but the soft woods i do always tend to stabilize i've got this really nice piece here of um what was this? This was, uh, I think it was blackwood, I think. Let me just give it a spray up and you'll see um, see the grain. It's got a really nice grain to it. Um, and that, obviously got that lighter piece there. I can, if I can get that kind of on the top of a handle or the under, underside of a handle, that would look really nice. But um, yeah, this is, I think it's 3.6 kilos I think it's like mega hard wood and I've done a bit of research and from the sound of it you don't have to stabilize um, I'm pretty sure it's black wood I don't know I have to, I have to double check what it is but whichever one it was they reckon that it doesn't need stabilize you can just oil it afterwards and uh, it should be good to go um, I do use a lot of ebony as well so i've got some pieces here and, and ebony is like it's very similar to that piece that i just had again very very dense and i think it's got quite a lot of oils of its own in there so it, it is pretty stable um so i don't normally stabilize ebony just go straight straight with it and then give it either a boiled linseed oil dip in there and good to go so anyway that is around about it i think um I'm trying to sort of slowly get back into it, but I'm having to have this dressing changed twice a week, which is a bit of a pain in the butt because it gets towards the end when it needs changing. It feels really good and you feel, yeah, get back to work and, and get, get some knives made. Then you're going to have the dressing change and it gets really sore again. So it's, I don't know, but shouldn't complain because it's, you know, it could be loads worse. And I'm just, as I said earlier, I'm just really, really grateful that um, the health system here in australia is really good and i was seen really quick and just the whole process was like fantastic i can't fault the the, the 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 service that i received um so i think that's around about it as in things on the go i've got i've got a few kind of knives on the go that which i started pre the operation period and uh so i need to get back onto those and i've got a few guys that have messaged me wanting wanting some knives so i will actually get back onto it but at the moment i, I i'm not able to stand up for, to, for for a few like i can probably do a couple of hours and after that i start getting really sore and, and for some strange reason it kind of goes down into your groin area as well i don't know why that is i presume it's all <laughs> all part of the part of the same i don't know system on your body i don't know whatever it is but um so anyway i hope everyone had a fantastic christmas um has was a bit of a hot one here i think it's about 35 36 degrees here in perth um new year was quiet didn't really go anywhere we just took it easy at home and i don't I drink much but I had a couple of beers and uh watched a few movies or whatever and that was our uh, um new year's eve night whatever you call it but uh looking forward to a better 2024 hopefully for a few issues that i've had um unex unexpected issues that have crept up which i didn't really think i'd you know you kind of think you're invincible and nothing's going to happen but things do creep up and if you don't if things don't feel right go to the doctor because that's the biggest thing uh, years back you kind of 
you got well this doesn't feel right and oh, I'll just get on with it and you just keep going but um, I did that and ended up in hospital so <laughs> um, if you don't feel right go and see your GP your doctor just get checked out and, and, and have a have a I don't know either six month or yearly checkup kind of blood test and just have a general check over it's just like service in your car you know just as you're getting older probably shouldn't leave it till, till you're getting older to be honest you should probably do it when you're younger but when you're young you're, you're stupid and you don't really think about things like that your health is is just uh, you know you take it for granted and i'll be all right but it does get you sometimes and, and if you've got something that doesn't feel right go to the doctors get it checked and it could save your life so on those on those notes I shall say to you happy new year and prosperous 2024 and look forward to making some some cool knives and uh, just having a good time really to be honest that's what we like so anyway stay safe I shall see you on the next video hopefully be some knives in that one cheers see ya